on this episode of JoJo Science Show. Prepare to be amazed. <laughs> JoJo Science Show! Hello, welcome to JoJo Science Show. Today, we're going to be doing 10 experiments with light. Kids, make sure an adult is supervising you while you're doing any of these experiments. Did you know nothing in the universe can move faster than light? It travels 671 million miles per hour, or 186,000 miles per second. That's, that's a short amount of time, but a long distance. The fastest thing in the universe. Kids, never ever stare at the sun or never ever look directly at a laser. Before you try this experiment, you might want to put on some sunglasses or something to protect your eyes from the light. Our first experiment will be to visualize a laser. You will need a laser pointer and an aerosol or spray can. Now we'll dim the lights to do this experiment. The light from the laser reflects off the aerosol droplets, and you can see it. Wow, this is really cool. What? For this next experiment, you'll need an acrylic or glass rod and a laser pointer. Now we're going to turn off the light and shine the laser pointer through the rod. Wow, look. Look, it's coming out the other end, and you can see the beam bouncing back and forth. This bouncing back and forth is called total internal reflection. This is when light reflects into glass over and over and comes out the other side. <laughs> Come on! You can use total internal reflections to send messages as different colors and flashing lights from one end of a rod or fiber to the other end. This is how fiber optics that bring the internet to your house works. For the next experiment, you'll need a bent acrylic rod and a laser pointer. Let's see if we can make the light travel around corners. The light is bouncing back and forth and going around the corner and coming out the other side. Oh, oh wow, it works. The light travels around the corner and comes out the other side of the rod as long as the angle is not too much. This decoration is an example of total internal reflection. See how the light is going around the bend? Doesn't that look really nice? For our next experiment, oh, <laughs> we'll use light to pop balloons. <laughs> we will need a frontal lens and some balloons. A frontal lens is like a big magnifying glass. It's really cool. What is awesome, isn't it? A frontal lens causes light rays to bend, and you can use it to focus all these light rays on one point. When all the light rays focus on one point, the light energy turns to heat. We can use it to pop all these balloons. This next experiment is called a peering coin. You'll need a bowl, a coin, and some water. As we can see, more like can't see, this coin is in the bowl and you can't see it. But when we pour water in the bowl, prepare to be amazed. Before I poured the water, you couldn't see the coin. When I poured the water in, the coin appeared. That's because water bends light. When the light bends, it allows your eyes to see into the bowl. We can't see the coin because the side of the bowl is blocking the light from reaching our eyes. But when there's water, it bends the light so that we can see the coin. This is called refraction. This experiment is called the switching arrow. How funny do I look? For this experiment, you'll need a bottle filled with water, a marker, and a piece of paper. This is a fun trick to play on your friends. 
prepare to be amazed again. Can you wait? Maybe some of you can't wait. So, so you just draw an arrow. You, so <laughs> First, draw an arrow on your paper. Which way is the arrow pointing? Are you sure? Whoa! So what makes the arrow switch? The bottle is in the middle. The water in the bottle bends the light. It acts like a convex lens or a magnifying glass. Where the light crosses is called the focal point. Because the arrow is behind the focal point, it gets reversed as the light travels to our eyes. Look, I have two left hands. Wait, that's impossible. <laughs> Do you want to see what's in this box? What's inside this box will help us to make a rainbow. Now you might think that's crazy. It's a glass prism. Now be careful with this. You can't get these prisms dirty. Now we have to go out in the sun. All you need is some sunshine and that prism. Let's see. Wow, the prism is split into white light into all the colors of the rainbow. The light travels slower in the prism, causing the white light to split into all the colors. This next experiment is called streaming light. You'll need a bottle with a small hole in it and a laser pointer. This experiment is about total internal reflections with a stream of water. You'll need to go over your kitchen sink or, or in your backyard or in a very big bowl or something like that. So point the laser through the hole in the bottle. Do you see how the light is following through the stream of water? And I'm catching the light with my hands. That's awesome. Total internal reflection also works in a stream of water. Who knew? I'm really catching a lot of light here. It's kind of tricky to get the laser in the right spot. This is called a photoresistor. We're gonna use it in our next experiment. A photoresistor conducts electricity when light is shining on it. It's like a gate that opens with light. When light hits here, then it allows the electricity to flow here. You'll need a small electric motor and a battery. And to carry the electricity, you'll need some alligator clips. <laughs> Am I doing it right? We built a circuit with the battery, with the motor, and with the photoresistor. When I point the beam at the photoresistor, then it allows the electrons to flow from the battery um, to, the, to the motor and make it spin. See? When I, when I shine on the photoresistor, the light allows the electrons to flow from the battery to the, to the motor and then turns the reel. Preparing for liftoff. We're gonna try it in the sun. Sunlight works just like the laser. Here's Eli the electron to show us how a photoresistor works. When the photoresistor is in the dark, Eli is tired and hanging out in the valence energy level. When he sees the light, he gets excited and goes to the conduction energy level. And now he can move around the circuit and he keeps moving as long as light is shining. For this next experiment, we're going to measure the temperatures of different colors so that you know which colors are dressed in different seasons. You'll be surprised of how big of a difference the color you're wearing makes. A big difference! For this next experiment, you'll need four sheets of cardboard, each different colors. You'll need a white, a black, a blue, and a red. You'll need some sunglasses and an infrared thermometer. Whenever you point it at something, that red dot measures the temperature of what's there. Do you know why objects have color? It's because they reflect light of that color and absorb all the other colors. Isn't that interesting? If you remember from our rainbow experiment, White light has all the colors of the rainbow. For instance, this red cardboard reflects red light and absorbs the red. Let's check the difference in temperature between black and white. The black gets to 66 Celsius 
and the white only gets to 48 Celsius. That's about a 30 degrees Fahrenheit temperature difference. In the summer, you should wear white clothes, and in the winter, you should wear dark clothes. Black absorbs all the colors of the light, and white reflects all the colors of the light. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee